Did we scare you? A little bit? No? All no. right. Okay. We tried. <laughs> Welcome to our newest episode of Millennials Ruin Quilting. Halloween is just around the corner. Mm -hmm. So today we're going to be talking about scary things. Scary things besides Lexus. Hmm. <laughs> scary things in quilting, things that scare you, things you're afraid of, things you haven't done yet. But you've wanted scary. to try. But you've always been like, I couldn't, I can't, I know. It looks really hard and yeah. scary. We're here to tell you that it's not. Whatever it is, it's not that hard and it's not that scary. Mm -mm. You should try it. And we'll help you. We'd be happy to. Yeah. So for me, I've always been... Um, around embroidery machines. I grew up with them. My mom's been machine embroidering pretty mm -hmm. much since they came out. Um, so it's been, I'm, uh, you know, over 20 years at this point. Don't ache your poor mom. <laughs> <laughs> I love you, mom. <laughs> uh, anyway, so always been around them. Always mm -hmm. loved the stuff that my mom made. Terrified of the machine itself because they're expensive. They are fairly loud. Yeah. And when they're stitching. And they're fast. They're fast. Nowadays, they're just, yeah. you know, they're just, stitching out and you know it's all on its own you don't have to do anything mm -hmm. after you hit go yeah so I never wanted to do it people would ask like oh you know your mom's a very talented machine embroiderer do you do that too no <laughs> uh, so I decided one day you know of course my mom was out of town and I always I have great timing mm -hmm. but I asked I said mom I really want to do machine embroidery can you just leave me the manual I want to try it mm-hmm she said, well, the manual's on the machine. I'll set it up for you. And uh, I went for it. And it wasn't that bad. Yeah? How did it turn out? Let's see it. So this was uh, the first thing I stitched. Just a couple little birds. It was a uh, free design, well, a design that came with the machine. Mm -hmm. I used our Viking Epic to do it. And uh, that's a that's single needle? It's a single needle okay. embroidery machine. Mm -hmm. So there was, you know, there's a few thread changes. But overall, I was pretty happy with how it turned out. It's cute, yeah. So I thought, yes, I want to do more embroidery. So I went to one of my favorite websites, Urban Threads, which oh, I've only looked great. at longingly. Yeah. yeah. Their designs are fantastic. Fantastic. Um, they have amazing embroidery files. They've just recently also added SVG for cutting machines. Oh, okay. I so, didn't know that. Yeah. If you have a, you know, any kind of cutting machine, Silhouette, Cameo. Brother, uh, Cricket. Cricket. Yeah, everyone makes them now. Um, yeah. You can get some of their designs. For cutting machines, just a little. That's great. That, that just happened. Yeah, and a lot of their um, stuff is really modern and kind of mm -hmm. fresh, but then they have a lot of classic and traditional. They're a great site. Yeah. Yeah, and they do tutorials and stuff too. Oh, I didn't know that. I didn't yeah, know that. they have tutorials, and some of their bigger files come with um, how to's and stuff. Great website. We'll give so, a link in our um, on our website. Yeah, check it out. Um, anyway, so I they usually have a free pattern. Mm -hmm. It changes, but the day I was looking at it, it was a chubby unicorn eating pizza. Best free pattern Which is ever. pretty much my spirit animal. <laughs> because don't we all just want to be a chubby unicorn? And eat pizza. And eat pizza. <laughs> I know I do. I know I do. So I, I saw it and I was like, yes, I need to stitch this. Mm -hmm. So I set it up, I put my hoop in, and I was changing my threads. I thought everything was going great, but something went horribly wrong. And you can see my alignment got off. I must not have had the hoop in all the way. Um, it happens. It happens. So I was pretty bummed. Mm -hmm. But again, this was my first day using the embroidery machine. So I didn't let myself get too down about it. Yeah. And a little while later, I tried it again. And look how cute it turned out. It's adorable. And not a stitch out of place. Yeah, no, I was very happy with it. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, somehow I managed to break a few needles. Okay. But... The nice thing is, there's always more needles. There, there are, and there's a lot of tricks and different things mm -hmm. you can do to get the right needles and the right um, tension and everything. Absolutely, but now I'm comfortable with the embroidery machine. It's not so scary. It's not so scary. I have a lot of fun with it, and my next challenge, the thing I've been even more afraid of than a single needle, is a multi-needle machine. That's and scary. so on yeah. the next episode, we'll be showing you what it's like to stitch with a 10-needle embroidery machine. Yeah, and we'll show you what you need, what kind of stablers you use for what, and how to hoop, and mm -hmm. all the different things for embroidery. So if you're afraid, you don't have to be you afraid to anymore. Be, it's super fun. Awesome. So yeah, so that was my fear. Conquered. How about you? 
So I have always been afraid of paper piecing and Ooh. curves. So why not do them both in one project? Um, I've never, I've always been afraid because I've never seen it done, never known what to do. So I have this book called New York Beauties and Flying Geese by Carl Hench, and we'll put it on the close-up camera so you can see. Um, I've had it for a really long time and never used it because it, they're too beautiful. How could <laughs> anything that beautiful be easy? Well, he really breaks it down and makes it super easy. And what I did was I chose this pattern here, the crazy Tula pillows. Well, wow, it looks complicated. So it looks really complicated, but it's not. And I haven't finished stuffing my pillow, but here is my pillow. I decided to start with a pillow because it's a smaller project, less commitment. I hate uh, committing to anything. Um, and Halloween coming up and I found this and went to my local quilt shop and Colleen who works there and the other ladies kind of helped me figure out what colors might work and go well. And here's my final product. I just have to finish stuffing it. But that came out great. Thanks. So this was your first paper piecing project. It was, and, and first curves. And like I said, he really breaks it down and makes it kind of easy to follow. And the great thing about paper piecing is it's kind of hard to screw up because you have a line that you have to follow. Your quarter inch is pretty much always going to be right where it's supposed to be. Hmm. And that's really what makes it kind of fun and easy and foolproof. Do you think you could show us how easy it is? I can. Lucky for you guys, I have everything I need already. <laughs> I'll cut here. Okay. <clears throat> so, if you're going to do some paper piecing, there's a few things you're going to need. The first thing you're going to need is a pattern. I used, like I said, the New York Flying Beauties book. And then you're going to need some vellum paper or paper piecing paper. Foundation paper. Foundation paper. Mm -hmm. And I chose vellum because it's kind of see-through and you can see what you're doing a little bit better. And then the next thing you're going to need is an add a quarter ruler. And I have a big one, but I use the small one for this project. Next, you're going to need some kind of cutting mat. You can use a big one or a little one. I like a little one right next to me where I am. You'll need paper scissors to cut your vellum. And then you'll need either a business card or some kind of card stock for folding, and you'll see why in just a little bit. Oh, and lastly, of course, fabric. Always need fabric. Always need fabric. So the first thing you're going to do, let's clean this up a little bit. Can you read this? I'm a little sue short. us, Jeopardy. <laughs> So what you're going to do is you're going to scan and copy in your pattern and print it right onto your paper. And then you are going to cut it out. Cut it out. It's like on Full House. Don't sue us, Full House. Don't sue us. Go to Netflix and watch Full House. Okay. So you're going to cut it out, your pattern, like this. And then you're going to, you know what, I forgot the other thing you need is glue. A glue stick of some kind. You're going to join it. Thank you, Colleen. You're welcome. You are, is this like Bama? You're going <laughs> to, where it says join here, you're going to join it there. And the great thing, again, about the vellum paper is that you can line up the line, and then you have one piece, just like that. Next, you're going to want to take your fabric, start with this one, and face up. You're going to want to place it with a little tiny dab of glue to kind of hold it in place. And then you're going to want to pause because I need to reference my book because I don't remember how to do it off the top of my head. Don't you just start stitching? No. No, you don't, Colleen. No, it's you don't. okay. I'm shedding. Okay. So you put it on and then... So the, these are numbered, and C1 and C2, C3, C4. You go in order. If you can count, you can do this. So C1 to C2, you're going to fold on this line using your cardstock. You lay your cardstock down and fold it over onto the cardstock. Then you take your add a quarter and butt it up against the cardstock and 
just cut it off. You can throw that away or whatever. Then you take this out, put it back, flip it over, and then you take your next piece. And you want to put it on, oh, you want to put it in the right spot, and it's, that's not even the right piece. You want to take your linen and put it on right here, and then you're going to flip it over and bring it to your machine and go ahead and stitch right on the line between C1 and C2. Another tip to add whenever you're doing paper piecing, you want to lengthen your stitches to about 15 stitches per inch. I usually go to, on my machine, I just 2.75 rather than 2.5. And the reason you do that is because when you rip your paper out, you want it to come out easier. Because at the very end, you're going to have to rip all this paper out and it's not going to be very fun if you have these really tight stitches. So another tip is that you don't want to go more than one or two stitches past the black line that you're going to follow. So like I said before, you're going to want to stitch right on this line here, and you don't want to go more than one or two stitches past the black line. I'm going to go ahead and lengthen my stitch length to 2.75, and then I'm standing, so it's a little awkward, but I'm just going to go ahead and run a seam. And my kids have been messing with it. They slowed it down a bit, so let's speed it up. And you just go right on that line. And I'm going to go ahead and backstitch, but you don't need to. I just get nervous. And just like that, you have a perfect quarter inch seam. And when you flip it over, oh, thank you, Colleen. You can finger press, but you're going to want to take it over to your machine and press it open just like that. And I'll show you what to do next over at the cutting mat. All right, now that you've sewn your first line, you go from C2 to C3. You take your paper again, and I'm just using a piece of cardstock, but you can use pretty much anything that's kind of thick. And you fold on the line between C1 and C3. And you do the same thing. You butt your um, add a quarter ruler, which mm -hmm. I don't know if you guys know this, but there's like a little lip there that makes it really easy to just kind of butt up there. And then you slide off your excess, and I think I need a new blade. You get the point. And then you come over here and you add, sorry about that, <clears throat> you add your next piece and you go back to your, you flip it over and you go back to your machine and you do it again on that line. And you keep doing that the whole way up and then at the very end you'll have it all done and you just cut off using this as your guide all the way around. So all this will eventually get cut off and you'll have wow. a piece. Nice. Yep. Easy peasy. That was not very scary. It really wasn't. The next thing is once you have this piece all done and your other pieces, you're going to want to do the curved seam. That sounds scary. And again, it's really not. That one is a little bit more involved, but once you get it, again, it's easy peasy. So let's kind of clean this up because I can't work in a mess. So in order to do curved piecing this way, we're going to be attaching this piece right here to this one. And I know they look like they don't match up at all, and it's because they don't, but they will. It works together just like magic, I promise. So what you do is you fold it in half so you can get your center point, and you can iron it or finger press it. I'm just going to finger press it, and you do that with both pieces. Now that you have your two pressed middle points, you put them right sides together where they met in the middle and you put a pin in it. And you try not to stab yourself. I really hate pins, but you kind of have to for this project. Then you go ahead and do the same thing on the ends. And you really want to have them pretty darn close together, pretty accurate here. Again, don't stab yourself like I did. We have to do that fade thing. Mm -hmm. It's really bad. I'm sorry, I'm <coughs> trying to go fast. Once you have the ends done, you're going to want to pin all the way through. Be very careful that you don't stretch 
or pucker the fabric. And when you're all done pinning, it's quite a few pins, but this is what it should look like. It's pretty even on both sides and it matches up. There's not too much bunching and you might have a little bit, but when you work it through the machine, it'll work itself out. So let's take it over to the machine and get it sewn. Next, you're gonna wanna begin sewing. I'll take out my first needle and make sure that everything is still aligned where it should be. It might move around a little bit, but again, be careful not to stretch the fabric or else it won't, even, it won't match up where you want it to. You're gonna do a quarter inch seam all the way through. I'm gonna go ahead and backstitch right here. I always backstitch and then run it through, making sure to not distort the fabric or run over your pins, even though I do sometimes. When you're all done, you'll have a piece like this and it matches up pretty darn well. And we'll take it over to the iron and press it out and I'll show you the finished product. Now that you've ironed it out, you have a perfectly curved seam where the edges line up very well. And I'm really excited about this. Look at that bird. You can even fussy cut. You can fussy cut. Amazing. Awesome. Oh. So get ready to tackle your fears and try something new. And if you're really afraid to try something on your own, just let us know what it is and we'll try it with you. Happy Halloween. Happy Halloween. Speaking of Halloween, your leggings look a bit spooky. Am, am I seeing spiders? Oh, spider okay. There's no great way to do this. I'm just going to kind of, oh, old. <laughs> these are tulip pink leggings. Wow. How cute are these? They're super cute. They've got skulls and webs. They're perfect for Halloween. Or any time, because they're pretty subtle. I mean, well, not subtle, uh, but the Halloween is subtle, is what I was trying to say. Yes, they're very cute. You can get them at iHeartTulipInc.com. She has great stuff on there. Awesome. Okay. Oh, I'm old. You are old. Okay. Well, now I'm going to go to a chiropractor. Happy Halloween. Oh, yeah. Woo! Woo! Thanks for joining us on Millennials Ruin Quilting. We'll see you next time. Cheers.